Hey, it's Kristen and I'm going to show you how I use the grid builder to create lettering layouts or compositions. So I'm starting out with just a square canvas and a uh, pencil type brush pen. Uh, you can use any size canvas, but I'm going to be posting this on Instagram. So I start with a square and I like to begin just by writing out the quote just to kind of get a feel for the size of the words, if there's any repeating words or, um, you know, like what words I really want to accentuate during the quote. So once I have this written out, um, I try to decide which words I want to be the largest. I want the word never to be larger than the rest and also sarcasm, I think should stand out. Maybe the word life, but I'll see how that goes once I have all of that written out. And next I'm going to play around with um, how I want the words stacked on top of each other. So I start with the words that I want the focus to be on. So I'm just gonna write those out, which are never and sarcasm. And then I just kind of play around with um, where the other words will go. And if I want them on a slant or wavy or anything, I might just sketch that in and um, decide if I want them small or the same size as the accentuated words. So also here, I'm just going to keep this a basic rectangle shape. You can do something fun like a circle or something different, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it kind of simple. Now, once you have an idea of how you want your quote laid out, you can start by adding some grids to this. And I'm just gonna add a new layer and turn off my initial sketch layer. And I'm going to open the Procreate brushes where I saved the um, grids to. And these are stamp brushes, so you can just tap the canvas and the um, it will act like a stamp. Now you can um, use the selection tool to change the side just by tapping and moving on the blue nodes. You can resize it this way or you can resize it by using the slider on the left. Um, let me try to erase, whoops, three finger <laughs> erase, there we go. It works better when I don't have the pencil in my hand. But using the slider, you can change the size of it that way to make it larger or smaller and just tap where you want it and then you can um, remove it, uh, not remove it, but move it around after you've placed it on the canvas. Now you can see there is a good deal of selection here, a nice variety. And I like the oval for, there we go. I want something large for the word never. So I'm gonna start with those shapes first and then um, add shapes that kind of conform around that oval to fit the other smaller words in. So I want something with a rounded bottom. And let's see, I think this one, and I, I want this on a new layer because then I can move them around individually. So I'm just going to resize this one. And um, to keep them straight, they have little lines right there in the middle. So if you line those up, you can be sure that they're all going to be evenly spaced vertically. Now I want to find a shape that will fit under the circle. So I'm creating a new layer and I want the top to be the shape of the bottom of the circle. So I'm just going to tap there and use the transform tool to resize it. And I'm going to size it so all of my um, edges are kind of lined up there on the outside. And I'm using the magnetic function to make sure it's, it's lined up properly. And if you just want to nudge it a little bit, you can just tap the canvas instead of actually uh, moving it or pushing it. And it'll just give it a little bit of a nudge. So now I need something for the word sarcasm. So I'm going to go back into the brushes and see if I can find something that is going to complement the shapes that I already have. And there are some really neat ones that look like um, they might be slanted or have a little bit of movement to them like this one. 
Um, those are really awesome to use, but I'm, I'm just going to go with something kind of basic for this one. And um, there's all kinds of banners that you can add, but I'm, um, let's just keep it simple and um, let's go with this one here on top. Um, and I want to change the size of that one. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. And I like that the um, top of this lines up with the bottom of the shape above it. And I'm just going to make sure that this is lined up with the transform. And let me find one more. And I want it to have a straight bottom. So this looks like it might work there. And just resize it. See if that will kind of fit in that space there. And if um, these don't all have to line up like I'm doing it because there's um, elements and illustrations and things that you can add after you've written out your quote to kind of fill in blank spaces. And I'll show you that towards the end. But um, right now this looks kind of good enough. So now I'm going to merge all of them by just pinching them all together. And I want to keep my layers a little bit organized because I plan on having several layers. So to do that, I'm just going to rename this. So tap the layer, choose rename, and then I'm just going to call it grid. And then I'm going to choose a, a brush pen. I'm going to use my sketchy AF, which looks like a pencil. So I use it to do all my sketches and lower the opacity of the grid layer so I can see my um, sketch a little bit better. Now to show you a little trick of how I find the center of a word because I like to work from the center out is I just write the word down and then I draw a box around it like a rectangle and then without looking at the word I just look at the box I draw um, where the center of that box is. I draw a little line and you can see that it's the V um, right in the center. I mean, this is kind of obvious without having to do this, but let me show you in the word um, uh, sarcasm. So I'm just going to start by writing this out. And the C is the middle letter, but when I draw a box around it and half that box, you can see that the line is at the end of the C. So the C actually isn't right smack in the middle. Now this might be different for you because your um, letter shapes might be different than mine. So your M's or S's or whatever might be wider than mine. So um, this is why I think everybody should kind of write out the words to kind of get the feel for the, where the centers are. Now I'm going to, like I said, start in the middle and work my way out. And as I'm doing that and writing the letters, I want to pay attention to the shape and follow the angles or curves uh, in this case of each shape paying attention to that center line that goes through it horizontally because that's where all of the middle of the letters should be and that will kind of keep the um, consistency of your word all the same while still following the shape of the letter so that center line is kind of your not your baseline but it's kind of like your um, guide to keep everything centered. Now the next uh, word that I wanted to focus on was sarcasm. So I'm going to um, pencil that in again, starting with my middle letter. And the C was a little bit to the left of the midline. So that's where I'm going to start with that. And then again, work my way out. Now that I have the sarcasm written out, I can tell it's a little bit off-centered, so I'm going to um, select the word and move it over. And I'm having to do this because I forgot to put this word on its own layer. 
So I'm just going to move it over a smidge and then I'm it, the um, SAR looks a little bit tight to me. So I'm just going to select the S and move that over a smidge and that looks a little bit better, a little bit better spaced. Now for the top words, which are I have, I'm going to start from the left um, for these. And again, you want to pay attention to the um, lines that are in the guide, um, especially with the script, because it helps to keep your lettering consistent. So you want to follow the uh, lines that are there to help give you the curves of the shape. So here you can see I'm trying to keep all of my letters parallel to the lines in the grid. And now that I have this written out, I can tell that it's a little bit off center. Um, it's a little bit to the left. So I'm going to um, need to move that over a little bit. And because I'm crap at remembering to put these on their own layers, I have to use the selection tool. And I'm just gonna freehand around that. Use the transform tool to move it. And it's, um, let me un turn off the magnetic. And I'm gonna use the green node to kind of twist it a little bit to the right and then pull it over a little bit. There we go. And that looks a lot better, I think. It's more centered now. So I'm going to remember to add a new layer this time. So <laughs> let me go do that before I forget again. And um, for faked A, uh, let me, let me um, try to do it from the center out this time. So I'm just gonna write it out, but um, wait, I want this to be script also. So I'm gonna write it out in script. And um, I, I'm trying to limit the design to no more than two styles of uh, lettering or fonts. So the center of this is about where the E is. So I'm gonna erase by doing a three finger scrub and then starting in the middle, that's where I'm gonna start my E and then work out from that. And um, a, a good rule of thumb when you're creating these is to try not to have too many different lettering styles um, and you'll get a more cohesive look. It'll look like they are, are all the lettering um, are kind of meant to fit together. But now because this is on its own layer, I can just select the transform tool and move it over. But I'm still not crazy about how this came out because uh, the F on faked is going far down into the sarcasm word and I don't want my letters touching like that. So I'm gonna rewrite it, uh, just create a new layer, turn the opacity on that layer down to kind of make it like a sketch layer and just start lettering over top of that on its own new layer. Now that looks a lot better, but I'm still not crazy about how the F is going into the A in sarcasm. So I, I'm gonna leave that for now and come back to it later. Um, first, I'm going to finish writing out the quote. So the rest of it is in my life. And I'm starting on the left, uh, but I'm thinking these, I'm writing it too big because let me start over. I didn't have enough room for life. So I'm gonna have to make these letters thinner as I'm writing them to get them to uh, all fit on that line. I could have made an extra um, grid box underneath for life, but I kind of want to keep this all on the same line. So now that I have it written out, I'm going to deal with the issue of the um, where it says fake day, how that's kind of too close to sarcasm and never. So I want to take the word sarcasm and move that down a little bit. So I'm going to find the layer uh, that those words are on and if you just tap that layer and then go over to choose the selection tool using the freehand selection I'm just going to draw around that as best I can it gets a little tight there and then use the transform tool and move that down so it's not touching fake da but now I can see that it's overlapping in my life um, but if I move in my life down, uh, I'm, 
I noticed that the quote is going to be too close to the bottom here. So I'm going to kind of have to move everything up a little bit. And I'm going to choose each of the layers by swiping each one to the right and choosing the transform tool. It now selected each of the layers and I'm just going to move that up a bit. And now I can go ahead and choose the layer for in my life and then move that down on its own. And now that I have all of the words written out, I'm noticing some gaps here or some open spaces that I want to fill up to give this a more cohesive feel to it. And there's a couple of things you can do with this. Um, one is to kind of um, pull out those ligatures, like for example, here with the letter L, or you can um, bring down the letter R and make some flourishes with that. Uh, same thing with the leg on the A. You can extend that out and add a little flourish. I kind of like that one, but let's see what else we could do. Um, you can add some designs or illustration elements to this. Here I'm just adding really simple little uh, lines that kind of bring your eye to this word um, and kind of draws that out. If you're not comfortable with drawing or doodling, you can always use um, like a graphic pack or clip art from um, stock art, but I really like the flourish on this A, so I think that's what I'm going to go with for this design. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the sketch of how my quote came out, I'm going to go in and lighten this up so I can draw over type of it. So I'm just going to turn the opacity down way low and create a new layer where I'm going to choose a brush pen and my go-to is my modern AF calligraphy pen. Um, I use this for the majority of my brush lettering on the iPad. And again, I'm just going to trace over my original sketch. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer for my words that I want to stand out and I'm going to change my brush so they have a little bit of a different look and I'm going to use my plain AF brush which is like my monoline brush and I'm going to um, draw in some of the lines that I want to be thicker than the rest to kind of mimic a, a brush look and I'm just going to go through and where the thickness would be just draw lines and one of the uh, features within Procreate is if you hold you'll see that the line kind of snaps to a perfectly straight line which is also known as a, a quick line so let me make a smaller brush here and now I'm going to draw in the rest of the letters with a thin brush and you can see it doesn't quite line up so after you make any kind of quick shape you'll get the option to edit that shape so if you tap the top you'll get the blue nodes that you can then manipulate and move around. But I accidentally touched off of that. So let me try that again. Let me make another quick shape. So you just draw a line and hold and then tap edit shape. And now you can move those nodes around to kind of line up exactly with your drawing. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and um, I'm just drawing in the rest of the lines and then by hand adding in the, um, spaces where there are gaps where the lines are meeting.
Okay, so that's how I use the grid builder to create a layout or a composition for a quote. The rest of this video, I'm just going to um, speed through because it's just stylizing and adding colors and design to the rest of this quote. So I will speed that up and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, there will be links in the comments to the grid builder as well as some of my um, brushes that I used in the video. Thanks for watching.